Drummers, shoes, foot function, which footwear, socks, barefoot, shoes is going to be best to help you play the bass drum best as possible. Listen, if you're like me, you've been working on foot mechanics, kick drum speed, single kick, double kick, and everything I want to talk to you about today is going to help you function over fashion, get all the details you need to make the most calculated shoe decision and have very healthy feet. If you're new here, my name is Brandon Green. I'm a fitness professional specializing in biomechanics, and I've been working with drummers like you, professional, and people just like you, helping you play forever. My background in biomechanics and the muscular system has allowed me to help figure out from a function perspective what helps drummers play better. So today, we're going to go over footwear, we're going to go over some foot mechanics, and really go over all the details you absolutely need so you can pick the best shoes for you. Now listen, as we're jumping into this, I'm going to be talking about function over fashion, so you may not like the recommendations I'm going to make, and that is okay. I want to make sure before I jump into this personal preference, it's absolutely fine. Listen, some of the most popular double bass drummers were gigantic construction boots. And I'm going to tell you why I don't recommend that and why I lean into the things I'm going to talk about today. But here's what we need to be thinking about before we make any decisions around shoes. Before we introduce some shoe principles, we have to understand the foot. The anatomy of the foot is absolutely critical to make sure that everything is perfect. If we think about the anatomy of the foot and the thing it does, it has three primary roles and many other roles depending on how you're looking at it. From a biomechanics perspective, this thing has 30 bones, 55 sliding articulations, and is really, really good at doing three things. One, becoming rigid for propulsion to help you walk forward, sprint, and even play the bass drum. The second thing is shock absorption. This thing is really, really good at opening all of its bones, pronating, if you will, to dissipate mechanical energy as heat through the rest of the muscular system to make sure that your joint, your joints, your bones, and everything above it don't take too much. And then the third thing it really is good at doing is adjusting to uneven terrain, like the inside of a shoe, walking on a hill, hitting a stony surface that's not too sharp. So these three things, propulsion, shock absorption, and uneven terrain, is really what the thing is good at. We have to take into consideration the 55 sliding articulations I mentioned. Now, this might seem kind of crazy, 55 this. This is 55 points of contact in here, but I want to give you an analogy. If I had two gigantic boats running parallel to one another, and I shifted the course by one degree just a little bit, at the very beginning, those two boats would stay parallel, and you wouldn't see much of a difference. But time and time over time, you would see these things start to separate more and more and more because that one degree difference over time makes a gigantic difference. So the reason why I say that is if I have 55 sliding articulations, and let's say for whatever reason, I could just fuse one of them. If all of them have an equal role, this is less than a 2% change. And you might not think, well, 55 to 54, that's not a big deal. And if I said, well, listen, what if I took 2% to function away and you did something millions of times, do you think it would show up? Well, the thing about that is that if I have 55 sliding articulations down to 54, and we think about walking, right? Most exercise programs will say you should be trying to get 10,000 steps a day, which is not a great heuristic, by the way, but just play my game. Let's say you're doing 10,000 steps a day. At the end of the week, that is 70,000 steps if you've achieved that. Of the 70,000 steps, if we cut that in half just to the one foot, because we're talking about, that's 35,000 steps on one foot. And then at the end of a month, if it's a, let's just call it four weeks to make it easy, we're getting to 28,000 steps. That's wrong. Well, 28,000 steps total, 140,000 steps on just one foot. And then at the end of the year, now we're getting to 140,000 steps times 12, we're getting over to millions, uh, over a million steps on just one foot with that 2% function change. So you can kind of see, even though I stumbled through my math there while I'm doing this YouTube video, you can kind of see what I'm trying to say from an analogous perspective is that 2% function over a long period of time can make a huge difference. Well, what if I said you were really only using one articulation and 54 articulations were not being used. And that's the case with the construction boot style shoe, is that when you wear a shoe, you're really only using this joint here, it's called the talocrural joint, where the tibia and the fibia come into the top of the talus, and you just do this motion, which is what most of us view as bass drum playing. But truthfully, there is a lot of smaller bones that help us to get more dorsiflexion and plantar flexion to do what we want to do with the bass drum pedal. So, One, from a function perspective, I'm going to ask you to lean into minimalist footwear. I really think the minimalist footwear thing is going to be, from an ergonomics perspective, allow your foot to operate better. And honestly, truthfully, it's a really, really great place for you to optimize foot functions. You actually exercise your feet with minimalist footwear while you're just playing the drums. Now, while I'm talking about this, you might be thinking, Brandon is going to tell me to play barefoot. And I'm going to tell you what. I love playing barefoot. I think drummers should, when possible, play barefoot, but I'm going to give you two reasons why I actually don't play barefoot 
ever professionally. When I'm in my basement and I have my pearl eliminator pedal that's pretty flat, I practice barefoot all the time so I can work on feeling my big toes and my small toes, especially when I'm doing different types of endurance exercises. There's a lot of value there. Two reasons why I don't do barefoot. Most of the gigs that I have done and studios I've been in, I hate to say it, are not super clean. And so walking around barefoot these places is just not something I feel comfortable doing. If you've ever played a bar gig, unlike, I mean, that's, it's not clean. You do a wedding gig, that's different, but being barefoot at a wedding gig is just not very favorable, okay? The second side of it is that a lot of these pedals have different foot plates, right? If we take a DW9000 or some of these new high-end double bass pedals, they are completely flat, where you could be bass drum, barefoot, bass drum playing all the time. This DW5000 pedal, which is an older one, has convexities and concavities that push up into the bottom of my foot. So when I'm playing, I'm extremely aware of the surface of the pedal, which is not bad for the pedal, but it just makes it feel uncomfortable and can lead to blisters and damage the skin of the bottom of the foot a little bit easier. So I would say this, if you have full autonomy of your environment on a very clean surface and you feel comfortable being barefoot and you have a pedal that is completely fat, flat, I think being barefoot is a really, really great way to go. But like I said, seldom do I feel comfortable doing that in a public place. Just personally, I'll leave that to you. So you're playing barefoot, keep going with it. Sock foot is absolutely fine too. I don't do a lot of sock foot myself because there's a reduced friction there. But tell you what, you like sock foot, keep going. It has just a close second to the barefoot conversation. Now, if we're going to talk about shoes, let's get into some shoe conversation because there's some really important things here. When we talk about shoes, I've got a few different running shoes here. I don't have any of those construction boots on purpose. What I do have is I have my old running shoes that I used to wear 10 years ago. And this is a Reebok shoe, it's a training shoe, but I wanna show you a couple things. Remember I talked about the foot and how mobile it is and all these 55 sliding articulations and all the thing that it can do? Well, if I think about the foot moving this way and I try and grab the shoe and do the same thing, the shoe moves a little, but nowhere to the same degree as my foot. So this means that there is resistance no resistance here when I move my foot naturally. There's resistance that this shoe provides that decreases my foot's ability to do what it wants to do. So this is a great shoe, or was a great shoe, but at the same time, it's not very good, right? One of the things that you see some people do is a bend test. This thing takes a lot of effort to bend, which means there's a lot of effort. I don't want to wear it because it's not going to let me do what I want to do here. The second shoe that I went to for several years was this shoe called the New Balance Minimus. And I don't believe they make it anymore, but the reason why I liked it is because when I do these bend tests, it moves easier. Now there's still some resistance, but it moves a heck of a lot easier, which allows my foot to move a little bit more naturally. It also has this company called Vibram Five Finger Sole, which is this more nimble sole, and I love how it feels. But they stopped making it, and truthfully, it has kind of a bit of a heel, and again, it's just not as much not favorable to letting my foot move naturally as possible. One thing it does have though, which is great, is a wider toe box, which is a very important thing for allowing your toes to do what they wanna do. Now, here's the big reveal, and I'm gonna say this right now. You might not like these shoes. I said this at the beginning, but here's, I'm coming from a function perspective, 100% over fashion. These are my favorite shoes to play drums in, and I got two different versions here. These are called the Vibram Five Fingers, and the reason why I wear them is because it is close to being as barefoot as I possibly can get without being barefoot. This is a black, right? You can see there's individual toes here, which is kind of the thing that some people don't like. But this shoe has almost nothing to it. I can roll it up into a ball. It's almost like a sock with a rubber sole. But it allows each toe to operate individually. So this allows me, basically, to have as close to natural barefoot function as I possibly can get without being barefoot. And the great thing about this is with that rubber sole, it gives me the friction on the pedal so I can do all the things that I wanna do if I'm doing push technique or I need the friction of the pedal for whatever reason, I can push through my big toe and allows me to perform at a very, very high level. I love these things and I will say this, if you've never tried these things and you have no issue with how they look, I would encourage you to check out Vibram Five Fingers because these are the best shoes. These are the KSOs. These are my favorite ones. Now, if you're getting into the Vibram world, my second favorite shoe is the Vibram Five Finger again. It's KSO, I believe it's called the Train 2.0. And the reason why I like this one, it's a little bit more robust. It still has all the same bending, but has a lot more support through the heel for anyone that's concerned about that. This shoe I actually use for running more because it gives me a bit more stability while I'm doing a lot more of my sprinting work, but it has a bit more of an aesthetic like a running shoe. And most of the time by wearing these black shoes, people can't tell I'm wearing them. So here's what I'm gonna throw out there as my biomechanical recommendation for you if you're playing the drums and you wanna optimize your footwear. I would really encourage you to check out Vibram Five Fingers. 
Everything I have set up today has been really setting up the idea from a slightly more academic perspective that barefoot playing or using your foot naturally is extremely favorable for playing the drums better. But if we want to make sure we keep our feet safe, we want to make sure that we're covering ourselves in a place that if I'm going to a new studio to record a blues thing, I don't stand out too much by being barefoot. Yes, you'll stand out by having toe shoes, but truthfully, these black shoes under my blue jeans, most people don't know unless they come really, really close to me. Now, I will say this. These are a bit polarizing, right? Most people see this and like, that is weird. And I understand that. There are plenty of other minimalist footwear shoe companies out there that are doing great things nowadays. I have a few other shoes that I really, really like. So I would say if you don't like the toe idea, in my opinion, it is going to be a really safe, amazing way to go. But there are a ton of other shoes that allow your foot to move more naturally. The Zero is another company, X-E-R-O. Uh, Merrill has a shoe called the Vapor Glove 6, which is my second shoe. Very mobile like this. Ultimately, here's what I want you to consider. I think these are the best shoes for playing drums. I really do. Unbiasedly, right? I don't care how they look. I love how they feel. But what I would say, we need to think about what this thing does. And if you think about what this does, and we can reverse engineer shoes to fit around what the foot is supposed to do, rather than forcing it to do something with orthotics, weird shapes to the bottom of the shoe, extremely hard shoes, thick rubbers on the bottom, it allows the shoe to get out of the way of our playing and allow our body to do what it's intended to do, which move, and use all the kinematics to use the muscular system to squeeze and push. Anyway. My name is Brandon. I'm a fitness professional who helps drummers just like you. I'd encourage you to check me out on Instagram. Please like and subscribe to this channel. Please share this. And please tell me below how much you don't like these shoes. Or if I told you they felt great, would you wear them? Let me know what you think below. Anyway, thanks so much for watching Function Over Fashion.